Hi, my name is Genevieve, and today I am making ube jam, also known as ube halaya. Ube halaya is a Filipino dessert. You can do a lot of things with it. You could put it on toast, you could put it on bread, put it in your panisa, put it in your ensimada. You could make ube pancakes out of it. You could top your pancakes with the ube jam. You could even put it on some ice cream. What else can you do? Um, you can put it on your halo halo, eat it with some leche flan, or you can just eat it by itself on its own. It's that good. For those of you that have never had ube jam that was homemade, I strongly encourage you to try it at least once because I feel like once you do, you will never see the ube jam that comes in a jar that you buy at a store the same again. So if you've seen my ube crinkle cookie video, I do use the ube jam that comes in a jar, but that is it. And if I were to use ube jam in anything else, I would use the homemade version because I feel like the results are just that different. The homemade version is super delicious, super good, and just the jar stuff is just way too sweet and it would not give me the results that I want in the end. This is super easy to make. It takes very little ingredients. Only thing is that it's very time consuming and it's not like one of those dishes where you can set it on the stove top and walk away, but it takes a lot of babysitting, yes. So if you have a lot on your mind and you wanna be in your feelings, if you have something bothering you right now, if you wanna read a book, or if you just wanna let your mind run free, making ube halaya might be the thing for you right now. <laughs> I am really excited to show you how to make it. So let me go over the ingredients with you and let's get started. But before we get started, I would love if you showed me a little bit of your support by liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Halaya. This is everything that you'll need to make the ube jam. You'll need one stick of unsalted butter, one can of sweetened condensed milk, one can of coconut milk, and one pound of frozen grated ube. So mine, my package looks like this. Grated purple yam, and it's and I found this in the frozen section. So I have made ube jam using different kinds of ube. I have found some whole pieces of ube in the frozen section, so I've used that successfully with the same results, and I've also used the fresh ube where um, I would peel the yam and cook it that way, but yeah, all results are the same. It's just this is my preference because it's just easier to cook. It's already grated, so it's already broken down. But we are going to be cooking this on the stove top, so let's go. The first thing you're going to want to do is melt your butter, so I am going to do that. By the way, so I am making a bigger batch. I use a lot of ube jam, so I'm actually making three times as much. So just don't be alarmed when you see like all these cans here. No, it's because I am making a lot, lot, lot more. My butter is fully melted, so now I'm gonna add my cans of coconut milk and condensed milk. My fire is on high, and that's because I'm just trying to heat my milks right now. I know you can't tell, but I see the liquid moving around, like meaning there's like bubbles, just beginning to bubble. So I'm gonna add my ube in now. Um, my ube is defrosted, as you can see, it's not frozen anymore. Um, this process would take a lot longer if you are trying to work with frozen ube. Okay, okay, all my ube is in, and I haven't started a timer yet, but I will once this starts boiling. I can't physically see that it's boiling, but I already know that it's heated because I could see like steam coming up and it's starting to foam. Like you could see all the white, like it's getting really foamy. So now I'm going to set two timers. One is um, going to be for an hour because that's how long it's going to take my ube to cook. And then I'm going to set another timer to go off every five minutes. And that five minutes is for me to come and stir this. So we are working with a starch. And that starch um, is going to settle to the bottom. And if you don't stir it um, occasionally, then it's going to burn. So we don't want the ube to burn. So we're going to stir it every five minutes. So that's why I grabbed the seat, because I am going to be here for a while babysitting my new baby. <laughs> 
So in the beginning, I had this set up on um, super duper high just because I wanted to get it um, going. So now that it's gotten really heated up, I turned it down. So now it's like on medium low and I have like a steady steam, a steady gentle steam going. It's kind of moving like lava on the top if you can't see. Can you see? But yeah, it's kind of like moving like really slow lava. I'm doing my second stir, so it's only been um, 10 minutes in. So when I stir it, I'm going all the way down to the bottom and I'm really just scraping the bottom. I can feel the ube getting stuck to the pan, so I'm kind of just unsticking um, what is on the bottom of my pot. I'm about to do my third stir, and if you can see, my ube is starting to bubble a little more violently violently than it was earlier. So I'm gonna turn it down, actually all the way, all the way down. So it's on super low right now. And then um, I'm gonna stir it. Hopefully it calms down. That was wild, Ube. That was too wild. And another thing I wanted to note is that during none of this time, am I gonna cover this? I'm just gonna let it cook um, uncovered because I'm making jam so there was water in the ube when it was frozen so I'm trying to evaporate uh, that water as much as possible so I could have a jam that's nice and thick. I am 30 minutes in about halfway and my jam is looking like this so I'm gonna stir this and then I'm going to taste it. So you can see it's already starting to get um, really thick. Now was the time to adjust the sweetness to your liking. I wanted mine more sweet, so I ended up adding three-fourths of another can of condensed milk to my ube. Sweetness is good. It's perfect. And it's going to get even more sweet as it cooks down more. But I could use a little more ube flavor, so I'm going to spike this with some ube extract. The ube is about 40 minutes into cooking and it looks like this. I did another taste and I really wanted the ube flavor to pop so I added more, by the way, this is the ube extract that I used and I ended up using about, just by how it feels, about three fourths of this bottle and this is a, this is a 25 milliliter bottle. So I used about three fourths of this bottle to get it this color and this taste. The taste is perfect, sweetness, good, Ube flavor is phenomenal. Although I use the ube jam in a lot of other things, like I still want to make it so that it's good by itself. My ube jam has been cooking for 55 minutes now and it's coming close to the end of its term here on the stove top. I've switched to a whisk to try to smooth it out as much as I can. If I really wanted this silky ultra smooth, I'll run it through a blender, but I really don't want to use another appliance, honestly. So you can see a little bit of chunks, which is okay for me. Now I'm going to super thicken this up by adding some cornstarch. I have um, about three-fourths cup of cornstarch here dissolved in um, three-fourths cup of water. So I'm going to add this in. It's thickening up really good, so I've reached a lot of resistance with the whisk, so I'm gonna switch to this spatula. Remember, I am making a big batch, a triple batch, so for a single batch, you would use one fourth cup of cornstarch dissolved in a fourth cup of water. Okay, my ube halea is all done. I'm turning the fire off, and this is the consistency when it's super boiling hot. As it cools down, it's going to solidify even more. So we are done on the stove top. I'm going to cover this and let it come to room temperature before I put it in plastic bags and store it away in the freezer. And um, the reason why you wanna cover it is because as, this, as it gets exposed to air, it can grow like a film on it. And we don't want that, right? <laughs> Since ube halia can be eaten on its own, I'm gonna try some. 
I'm not trying to burn myself. Cheers. Mmm. Creamy. Ooh, baby. Sweet. But not too sweet. It's like good. Like I could probably just eat this like it was oatmeal or something. Mmm. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is really good. I have big plans for this ube halia. Whatever I'm going to make with this, I'm going to make ube pandisal. But whatever I make with this is going to be so awesome. It's just going to, mm, that flavor, so much more. Wow, this is great. <laughs> if you have any questions about any part of the procedure or anything in general, just drop, go ahead and drop it in the comments. If you like this recipe and this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on all the other recipes that I want to share with you. Bye! Thanks for watching!